Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing well today. In this video, we're gonna cover a wide range of topics. During that last big drop that we had in Bitcoin, a lot of people lost faith. In fact, I know people who invested recently into Bitcoin, meaning that they invested into Bitcoin in 2020 or the latter end of 2019. And they completely sold off all their holdings and they decided that they're no longer gonna be buying investments in the digital asset space. And even people that have been in the space for a long time reacted very emotionally to the huge drawback that we saw. I just wanted everybody to know I haven't lost faith. In fact, I'm even more bullish on Bitcoin today than I was a month ago. Just like everybody else, I thought it was pretty disheartening to see that huge pullback. But given what we're seeing now, I think the conditions are even more ideal for Bitcoin's growth and even long-term adoption. In this video, I'm gonna focus on what's going on in the legacy markets and the developments with the coronavirus. Because I've been noticing that some investors, some big notable investors in the legacy markets are selling their short positions and they're moving into long-term positions by buying some of these dips. And personally, I'm looking at two things that would change my sentiment altogether. As I said, long term, I'm always bullish on Bitcoin, but short term, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more downside or some choppy action. But if anything significant changes in these two things that I'm watching, it'll even turn me bullish in the short run. If you enjoy this video, you enjoy the content, you like learning about the broader picture rather than just focusing on cryptocurrencies, I strongly suggest that you guys subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. And let me know how I'm doing by commenting down below. Give me some video recommendations if you want me to cover other topics. And lastly, if you want to join a community of like-minded individuals, I welcome all of you guys to join my Discord channel, especially in times like this. It's nice to have a support group, a group that you can ask questions, and even gain insights into what other people are doing to weather in the current storm. So if you're interested in joining, follow me on Twitter, send me a direct message requesting access to my Discord channel. With that, let's go ahead and dive into this video. In my view and the view of many others, the reason why Bitcoin fell so much along with the stock market is because of the coronavirus. Many traditional investors decided to unload on their equities positions and go all cash, leading to a massive sell-off. And then other investors who saw a upcoming liquidity crisis decided to also go into cash because whenever you have a liquidity crisis, cash becomes highly desirable and sat out. And for that reason, you saw a huge drawback in the price of Bitcoin, the Dow, the legacy markets, gold, everything went down. And that's something that you typically see in a liquidity crisis. So if Corona caused it, it's likely that once the coronavirus goes away, once we control its spread, that the markets will recover significantly. And for that reason, I feel it's very important to follow the developments of the coronavirus. So I basically look at two different websites. For instance, this is worldometers.info. I'll include the link in the description below, but it tells you the number of cases and the number of deaths, how many people have recovered. What you're looking for is you're looking to see this flat line. Once you see this exponential curve begin to flatline like it did here, that's a good indication that we're getting this virus under control. If you're more visual, you could also use this. This is from John Hopkins website. Again, all this will be included in the description below. I'll put all the relevant links there for you guys so you guys can check out these websites on your own. But me personally, I'm basically following these charts and I'm also following what's in the news. And I wouldn't take these headlines literally. All these guys are making their predictions and many times their predictions are wrong. Their projections are wrong. But I'm looking for more positive headlines. If you look at most of the headlines today, it seems like the consensus is that this is gonna get worse before it gets any better. I mean, just look at what's going on in my home state. All Californians are ordered to stay home by Gavin Newsom. So basically what I'm looking for is the reverse of this. You wanna see, again, those charts that I was looking at, you wanna see those flat line, but more importantly, you wanna see headlines like this. Once you see headlines like this in America, because I think America was one of the more later places that this virus hit, so you wanna hunt for headlines like this. And when you start to see headlines like that, and perhaps you even see a divergence in the correlation that you currently see between Bitcoin and the Dow, to me that possibly means that we're ready to start the Bitcoin bull market. 
And again, the timing couldn't be any more perfect. Number one, you have Bitcoin having coming up. Number two, you have central banks around the world in tandem injecting huge amounts of liquidity into the market. And lastly, you had such a huge drawback in Bitcoin that now investors who weren't looking to buy in the seven to 10,000 zone are now very much looking forward to buying Bitcoin at these cheaper prices. And like I've been telling a lot of my subscribers, I think there's also a chance that crypto start rallying before the stock market does and even before gold does because usually when you have a liquidity crisis, gold bottoms out first and then starts to rally and then the stock market follows. Given that cryptocurrencies, the digital asset space, has such a low market cap, I think there's a chance that it begins rallying before gold, before the S&P, before Dow Jones and the legacy markets. So for that reason, I'm watching these charts very closely. But again, today we continue to see a correlation between the legacy market, the Dow Jones, for example, and the price of Bitcoin. For the most part on the news, especially the financial channels, most people are basically talking about gloom and doom and how the markets are going down, how we're going to see significant inflation. In fact, some people even think we're going to go into a recession, like a two, three year recession or a depression. On the other hand, I have been giving an alternative outcome. I didn't see many people on mainstream echo any of the things I said until recently. Now I'm gonna play you a series of clips from reputable people who are also viewing this as a historical buy opportunity. We'll begin with Kyle Bass, who did this interview on CNBC. And he's the guy, if you didn't know, who called the 2008-2009 financial crisis. When I look at this, whether this takes two months, three months, or four months, whatever the number is, uh, till we see peak deaths and then, and then a, a, a curve on the, on the downside. You know, the way that the market is, is trading today, whether you're looking at uh, cruise, line, cruise stocks or airline stocks or uh, hospitality, all the hotel and motel stocks, and then, and then our energy business is also under attack, you know, yep. by, by Russia and Saudi Arabia, it's all happening at the same time. And I think uh, it feels to me like the panic is so much larger than it was in the financial crisis of 2008. And I think calmer heads will prevail. Uh, and I think the prices that are some of these things yeah. are transacting at today are are going to be literally uh, buys of a lifetime and, for our generation. And the one thing that you highlighted in 06 and 07, Kyle, was that there were underlying structural problems in the credit markets, in the financial markets, and in the banks. When you look at it, do you see those same things today? Or is this an income statement problem, not a balance sheet problem? Yeah, the most fascinating thing about today as, as compared to the financial crisis is back in 2008, the, the banks were the center of the problem. And today, the banks are actually the center of the solution. The banks are very well capitalized today. Uh, we essentially re-equitized our entire banking system. Uh, in 2008, we had about a trillion of equity and about 17 trillion of assets in our banks. We pumped in almost $800 billion into the equity of our banks. And we, we the United States, have the strongest banking system in the world. Europe, on the other hand, never recapitalized its banks, and they're in real trouble. And China's banks and Hong Kong's banks have yet to uh, be completely recapitalized. I think this crisis will force it. So you're going to see banking crises in Europe. You're going to see banking crises in Hong Kong and China. And the U.S. is going to be the anchor for the world this time. And that's why you believe, and I'll reiterate what you said, because I kind of jumped on top of you there, that there will be things that are buying opportunities of a lifetime out of this. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, look, the, the market has, has done some uh, it, it was the biggest bull market, the longest running bull market in U.S. history prior to uh, the, the Wuhan virus uh, really attacking our marketplace, uh, both literally and figuratively. Uh, and now it's created uh, dislocations in many, many, many different uh, companies that I think will be rectified on the back end. And again, I don't know how long it's going to take. But there are some really, just really interesting, you know, you, are, you can actually be a value buyer once again. I, I, I forgot what they look like in the last decade. 
Next up, we have O'Leary. He's basically going to talk about what equities he's buying. And I think it's pretty valuable, especially for you guys that are looking to buy stocks for the long term. I think a lot of the traditional investors are going to be flocking to stocks that give them a decent yield. I think REITs are going to be a good play. I think a lot of these blue chip companies are going to be a good long term play. But I think any company stock that has a decent yield, that has a good balance sheet, that has decent forward-looking projections in terms of growth, I think those companies are going to be highly desirable. Let's go ahead and listen to O'Leary and see how he's investing in this market. What are you doing with equities? So all I've done with equities is go to higher quality balance sheets, getting a 2.2, 2.3% div yield, which is way better than the 10 years giving me. I don't have duration risk. I'm very concerned about that debt. between like financials or very, which are very No, I don't here. have any financials. No? I focused on consumer, industrials, Tech has been uh, well rewarding, the ones that do provide dividends. Um, and I've started to put some money to, to, out in Europe because the PE ratios are 20, 30 percent lower. Yeah. Although there's no growth Maybe there. For a reason. Yeah, I get it. But still, I'm getting a 3.2 percent div yield on my European portfolio. So I'm not complaining about that. And so my big problem now is I have a lot of cash to put to work. And I know this. This is a problem for every investor mm -hmm. because normally you would blend it between credits. Yeah. I am not comfortable There's putting nowhere money to go. To work. And lastly, I'm going to play you a clip from Mark Lasley, the CEO of Avenue Capital, and he gives his forward-looking projections on where he thinks the market's going to end up by the end of the year. The market is definitely going to be higher at the end of the year. The you know, the question is how much lower does it go from today before it starts moving back up? And you know, so where I think Steve is correct is I think the news that's going to come out is still going to be negative. So it may not be negative, um, you know, on a, where companies are going to have lower earnings or you're going to have things like that. But really what you're going to have is all the, all the news that's going to come out about people, more people having it, hospitals being overwhelmed. You know, if you sort of think about what happened in Italy, we'll have the same thing. Hopefully it's not as bad. But I think, I think the market, even though the market knows that's going to happen, you're going you're gonna to find things will end up being lower. Where I agree with Ricky, I think it is a massive buying opportunity. Trump pushes 1.2 trillion stimulus, 1,000 checks in two weeks. Now, this is going to be very targeted. He's going to give this to people that are going to need it the most. So there's probably going to be a cutoff. So if you're making, for example, 100, 200K, there's a chance that you may not get this $1,000 paycheck. But what he's basically trying to do, it seems like at this point, it's inevitable that people are going to be losing their jobs. To soften the blow and to help middle class, low income families, he wants to give $1,000 paychecks in two weeks. His original plan was to do a payroll tax cut and I personally think that would be huge it would definitely soften the blow some of these guys some of these folks are gonna need immediate relief so I think it's reasonable to send out these checks first and in future legislation in future stimulus that they pass I think there's a good chance that we may get a payroll tax cut and if we get that to me that's basically the bottom for Bitcoin I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm going to watch the Corona stuff unfold. But if the Corona stuff starts to get a little bit better and we get payroll tax cuts, I'm personally going to call that as Bitcoin's bottom. And I'll probably go in very aggressively with my cash position. So if I were you folks, I would definitely keep an eye out on that. Or you could just subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and I'll make sure that you guys are the first to know when this stimulus gets passed by Congress. Given that a lot of the focus on my videos is on these centralized finance platforms like BlockFi, Crypto.com, BitTrue, etc. I thought it was important to cover this bit of news. Cryptocurrency custodian Bitco expands crypto insurance policy. As many of you know who use, for example, Nexo or Celsius, they custody with Bitco. And initially, they only offered $100 million of coverage, but now it looks like they're expanding. And I mentioned this many times in previous videos, so it's almost prophetic that this is happening. I mentioned that this insurance is going to broaden, it's, it's going to expand in its scope, and that's exactly what you see today. In accordance with an announcement on March 18th, Bitco is the primary crypto asset custodian to permit its clients to buy extra restrict above its commonplace coverage. In other words, you can get coverage in excess of $100 million. And I think you probably have to pay a little bit extra for that. 
but it's an option for you today. So if you're not happy with just $100 million, you have maybe billions of cryptos that you custody with BitGo, you can now get larger coverage. And this paragraph here basically echoes what I said earlier. Since cryptocurrencies are a very dangerous asset class to carry, the demand for insuring them is rising. As Cointelegraph just lately reported, defending cryptocurrency holdings with insurance coverage is slowly turning into a mainstream alternative. As the existing system collapses, I think a lot of people are gonna shift to alternatives. And that's why I'm so bullish on the DeFi space. And that's why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin. And the fact that these insurance companies are broadening their coverage to me at least, shows you that there is an appetite for all this stuff. Crypto lender BlockFi is raising interest rates on Bitcoin and Ether. As many of you may or may not know, I've published a lot of videos on BlockFi. In fact, if any of you guys are new to BlockFi and you have yet to use their services, I strongly recommend that you click the upper right hand corner of your screen and check out some of the BlockFi videos I've published. I've used my dad's account, I've used my friend's account, and I disclose all their funds to, for all you guys to see. Unlike other YouTubers where you don't get to see, you know, the exact amounts of funds that they've invested on this channel, you'll get to track how my dad's account is doing, who's a very conservative and my friend's account, who's sort of moderate to conservative. You'll get to see what kind of gains they're making, what kind of interest that they're getting paid. So again, check out those videos if you're new to my channel, but they've increased the rates for Bitcoin. The annual rate for the first five Bitcoins will now earn you 6%. And based on my assessment, this is probably one of the highest rates in the market. And for Ether, they're giving 4.5%. I do know another platform that offers a higher rate. It's called Bitchu. If you wanna learn more about that platform, click the upper right hand corner of your screen. I've published video reviews on that platform as well. This on a market level is very competitive, 4.5%. A lot of other people are giving uh, south of 4%. So in my eyes, this is another competitive rate. So these rates are gonna be effective April 1st meaning that for the rest of the month, you'll earn the old rates, but for the month of April, you'll earn the new rate. And this is a message from the CEO, Zach Prince. Our balance sheet is stronger than ever and shifts in the institutional lending markets have created opportunities that expand our margin. I don't know this for a fact, but you know, they had a recent round of funding where they I believe raised around $30 million. And there's some speculation that they're using some of the VC funds to supplement these rates. And you have to understand that these rates are driven by market demand and supply. So it's gonna shift over time. There's no guarantee that they're gonna be able to offer 6% yield forever. And this may just be a attempt at luring in more clients. But to be honest with you guys, that's purely speculation on my end. And it's not gonna stop my dad or my friends from using this platform. And another platform that I use is crypto.com. You have to stake 500 MCO tokens, unlike BlockFi, where you don't have to stake anything. You basically are eligible for their rate as long as you create an account with them. With crypto.com, if you want some of the more premium rates, you'll have to stake 500 MCO tokens. And if you look at the price today, it's falling significantly with the rest of the market. Now, I'm not a profit in terms of predicting where the price is gonna go, but if you're looking to get in and you're looking to secure those premium rates, whether it's now or it's on a pullback, if you like crypto.com, this may be your opportunity to get that 500 MCO tokens to stake. And if you want to learn more about crypto.com, I've also done extensive reviews on this platform. Just click the upper right hand corner of your screen to access those videos. Well, that pretty much wraps things up. If you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe, click that notification bell. And if you found any value in the content that I provided, click that like button and check out my Patreon. I'm, I'm currently offering significant discounts on my market analysis and consultation services. So if you're one of the early people to sign up for that service, you'll get a significant discount. I will be raising the prices when the slots fill up. So check out my Patreon if you're interested in signing up for those services. With that being said, this is Crypto One Stop signing out. I'll talk to you folks next time. Bye.